Hello, everyone. Pleasure to see you here. And it is a great pleasure to see so many young, excited entrepreneurs here. How many of you would you like to start your own company? Show of hand. Can you please see me after the talk? Uh, so the subject I'm talking about is innovation and entrepreneurship. And I had a guest earlier today who was a very young entrepreneur from Mexico. He was 21 years old, and he already started his second company. And he was building sort of his dream. So I wanted to kind of tell you why I became an entrepreneur, why I started my company, mostly international, global company, sort of like what was the moment that it triggered me to build my business. And then I wanted to tell you a few times that I have a few people who I owe my success to, that I met them and they explained to me how to build the structure that I built the company. So I come from Iran. I am Iranian American. I was about 16 years old, actually 15, when I went to US to study first high school, then college, then return home to be part of the family business. You know, there is a lot of family businesses in Russia that are very big. And I was just planning to go to US to study and go back to Iran and be part of our industrial group. It was called Bella Shoe Company. And in fact, my father visited Moscow quite often because going back 50 years, we used to export shoes to Russia. We used to export shoes even to America athletic shoes, like Nike, that we manufactured in Iran. And in one of the trips that my father made to US, while I was going to school in Massachusetts, he asked me to join him in New York. So we went to New York. I was 15 and a half. And I met a gentleman in Manhattan. I believe his name was Mr. Center. And my father was doing business with him, the shoe export from Iran to New York, from Iran to Moscow. And I saw the guy was really rich. He had a beautiful Manhattan office. And then we went to his Manhattan apartment, and it was even more impressive. This is going back like uh, almost 35 years. He had a butler, he had a cook, he had a chauffeur. And then he was kind enough to invite us to his uh, weekend home in Long Island. And my father had asked me, Said, bring your tennis racket because my guest wants to play or my host wants to play tennis with you. So I actually spent like 48 hours with this gentleman. And that was the beginning of what I realized what business is all about. In his house in Long Island, he had a tennis court, he had a Japanese garden right on the river, and I said, whatever this guy does, it sounds good to me. I'm going to follow his sort of footstep. And then during dinner, he explained to me that he's in the shoe business, 
but it's very difficult to manufacture shoes in America at a competitive rate. So at that time, he imported shoes from Japan, Taiwan, China was not a player yet, and he even came to Iran to import shoes from Bella Shoe Company. And at that moment, I realized that I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to run my own business, and I want to run it not only in one country, but in multiple countries around the world. And you know, that entrepreneurial spirit, I almost wanted to quit high school. I was in high school at that time and start my business because I was so excited, ready to go. And time passed. And by the, by the way, at that time, as you could tell, I wasn't living poor. I was very spoiled, rich kid in America. And, but I still had a little fire in me. I did want to accomplish things. And I went through high school and college. And then the turning point, again, this is sort of the second aha moment. You know, the first aha moment was meeting somebody much richer than my father and wanting to be rich, wanting to do business in New York and in Long Island. The second aha moment was in summer of 1979. As an Iranian, do you think what happened in 1979? Any idea? You know, we had a little revolution. The Shah was ousted, and as a family, we lost 98% of our wealth. And my father and his brother had built uh, 14 manufacturing facilities, 7,000 employees. In 1979, our turnover was about $300 million a year. So that was a very sort of good size business at that time. But overnight, we lost everything. And again, I think my father is my best mentor and my best friend. And he also was kind enough to, later on in my life, seed fund my first business. But again, my father came from Iran to California and within one week, he sat us down and he said, Said, you know, you used to live in a house on Sand Hill Road, which is where all the venture capitalist companies are there. I had a maid service twice a week. And he said, Said, that is finished. In one week, if you want to live like you used to live, you better start working. And this is when I am like 20 years old. I was not planning to work till I am about 30. But it was sort of like fast forward, and I took his challenge, and I actually started my company that summer. And when he kind of gave me a shock and got me sort of interested in working, he also gave me a solution. He said that I will fund you for six months, $3,000 a month to do whatever you want. And this is like the packaging import-export company I started in 1979. And till today, I run that company, it's called ALPS, American Liquid Packaging System, and it is a $150 million business with operations in Mexico, Spain, Austria, and it's almost self-running and is a fantastic business. So then fast forward coming to entrepreneurship in technology business. 
living in Silicon Valley during the first bubble, during the first internet boom, I felt really left out because everybody around me was becoming millionaire and I was still selling water and packaging. So I said, my God, I have to get into this game, the technology startup world. And I started investing in startups about 15 years ago. And then I realized what an important part of the world I live in, which is the Silicon Valley, the home to Facebook, Google, Twitter, Dropbox, and I really embraced that culture. That, and in the beginning, I thought I don't know anything about technology. But I realized through my years of working in packaging and bottled water and starting 10 companies in Austria, Spain, France, Italy, I actually did know something about business. And I could help the entrepreneur define their product, define what problem they were solving, and how they're going to build their team and their company. And really had a great time investing in four or five companies per year from the cash flow of my other business till uh, 2006. And in 2006, we had a little real estate building that by coincidence, we had Google, PayPal, Logitech in there. And then we realized, if, I said if it's a big building like this building, and we have more startups in there, maybe we can make better investments. So I started Plug and Play Tech Center in January 2006. And that is what occupies me now 80% of my time. I have 300 startups at Plug and Play. We have helped 1,000 startups in the past six years raise a billion dollars. And some of the startups are incredibly successful, like Drop. Box, Zeus, Lending Club, etc. And then I mentioned to you there was one other sort of aha moment for me. There is a gentleman at MIT, his name is Ed Roberts. So Mr. Roberts was much smarter than me. That's why he's at MIT, and I am at Menlo College in California. And he started the entrepreneurship program at MIT 40 years ago. He had business plan competition, pitch programs, and then recently with the Kaufman Foundation, he did a research on how many startups have come on out of MIT. And if you calculate how much jobs they have created, how much wealth they have created. They are mostly in the US and mostly around MIT. It would be something like the eighth economy of the world. So my message to you guys is that startup innovation technology is incredible. And we could all embrace that and change the world. It is really a great pleasure for me to be here in Moscow. Actually, Plug and Play Tech Center inauguration was today. And I love to, like the same way that we have helped about 1,000 startups in California, to realize their dream and build great companies. I hope we can do 500 from Moscow and Russia 
And the biggest joy I get in life is to be part of the journey of a successful entrepreneur, similar to the mentor I had in New York, Mr. Center, to say this during the idea stage or the seed funding or the venture funding, Said, plug and play, uh, Magomed, Morat, my partners here, we had a positive impact in their journey. And I don't do this only for pleasure. I do it to make money. So if the entrepreneur is good, we would like to meet them. We would like to help them realize their dream. And that is my biggest passion in life right now. I believe we have made a positive impact in 1,000 entrepreneurs' journey, and I hope to be able to do 5,000 in the next five years, and at least a good portion of it from Russia. And again, this is a great pleasure to be here. This is my third trip in 12 months, and I don't do anything unless I do it full-heartedly with passion and with a lot of energy and execution. Again, thank you so much for the opportunity to talk to you. And I hope the ones that put up your hand, can you put it again? I want to take a picture of you that have a startup idea. You come and talk to me after the TEDx. Thank you so much. Thank you.